Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Last year, there was an average of 500 forest fires every day in the United States. The forest burned would make a strip nearly a mile wide around the earth at the equator. Ninety percent of these destructive fires were the result of carelessness on someone's part. The lighted cigarette carelessly flipped out the car window. A campfire left untended. A lighted match thrown into a drift of dry leaves. Or any one of many other thoughtless acts that can cause a fire. When you are out in the woods, here are four simple rules of fire prevention to follow. Crush out cigarette, cigar, and pipe ashes. Break matches in two after using. Drown all campfires. Then stir up and drown again. Always be sure to find out the law before using fire. By following these simple precautions, you will be doing your part in the prevention of costly forest fires that we can't afford. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. During the summer season, the townspeople of 30 Mile in the Yukon Territory were thrown into a state of nervous tension by a series of robberies. Wherever men gathered, the topic of conversation was invariably the same. Did you hear about the latest robbery, Jake? You mean there's been another one? Yeah, but those crooks robbed the bank only a few days ago. Got away with $920,000 in cash. I know, but since then, there's been a holdup right on the edge of town. Holy mackerel. I didn't hear about that. It happened last night. That sourdough Willis was heading down to Dawson City with his gold. Yeah. A couple of bandits with their faces masked took everything Willis had. Well, that proves there's a bunch of crooks operating around here this summer. And they've got somebody leading them who knows all the ropes. That's right. The constable might as well be in timber, too, for all he's been able to do to track them down. Yeah. The next day, John Carver, owner of the cafe and the bank in 30 Mile, called a meeting of the leading townsmen at the trading post. The meeting was attended by the constable assigned there. Men, I call this meeting because something has to be done about the crooks who are operating around 30 miles. All right. They took 20000 from the bank a few days ago. Next, they robbed that old prospector of all he had on the trail to Dawson City. Last night, they cleaned out the safe at the express office. Something has to be done to put a stop to their robberies. What you say is true, Mr. Carver, and I've been trying to get a line on them. They seem to have a very smart leader. They're liable to hit again. They've got to be stopped. Now, uh, quiet down, men. Constable, I know you represent the law here in 30 Mile, but so far you haven't been able to cope with the crooks, as you just admitted. Now, unless you do something, and do it soon, we're going to have to get together for our own protection. They'll be caught sooner or later, but you have to leave it to the law. We're willing to have the law act, Constable, if it does act. But the bank can't stand any more losses. And we never know when those crooks might strike at the cafe. Now, if you've decided on a plan, we'd like to hear it. Sure, what are you now, listen, man. I admit I can't handle this alone, and I don't intend to. I've sent to Dawson City for help. How many bodies do you expect him to send here, Constable? Frankly, I've asked for only one. One? Oh, I see. Now, just a minute until I explain, please. The man I asked for is the best Mountie in the organization, Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston, man. Yes, I've heard of him. And I know he has quite a reputation, but I doubt that even he will be of much help against that clipper gang. Wait and see. 
Before you men decide to take matters into your own hands, give him a chance. Now, what do you say? Well, I hear Preston's mighty good. Yeah, we'll see what the money can do. How about it, fellas? Sure, give him a chance. All right, constable. The men seem to agree to wait for you and Sergeant Preston to catch that gang of crooks. But I warn you, if you don't do it soon, we'll take over law enforcement and run things here in town ourselves. Late that same night, John Carver was talking to a visitor in his private office at the cafe. Well, you, so far we've gotten away with things. But the constable sent to somebody who might make it hot for us if he gets to 30 Mile. Yeah? Who's that, John? He sent to Dawson City for that mobby, Sergeant Preston. I guess you've heard of him. Preston? I'm sure I've heard of him. Having him come here and get on our trail isn't good at all. I know. He's clever and persistent when he sets out to catch anyone. What are we going to do? There's just one thing you can do. That is to make sure he doesn't get here. What do you mean? Don't act stupid, Jules. He's most likely on his way from Dawson right now. Go out of ways with Fred and pick a good spot from which you can shoot him from ambush. That's risky business, John, killing Amadi. Especially one as well known as Preston. If you are careful, there's no risk. It's a case of him or us. Just remember that. There's one more thing, John, that maybe you don't know. What are you talking about? That dog of his. What about the dog? Reckon you haven't heard of that big husky of Preston. He's got that dog so well trained, it's almost human the way it tracks people down. Then use your head. Shoot the dog, too. Then you'll have nothing to worry about. But make sure you pick a good spot to ambush them so there won't be any slip of them. All right. We'll plug them both. I know just the right spot. Good. Just leave it to me and Fred. We'll go out and wait for that Maori and dog to come along the trail. Then we'll let him have it. And our worries will be over. That same night, Sergeant Preston brought his horse to a stop in front of the Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson City. Whoa, oh, buggy. Whoa, oh, boy. Did he? Come on, Jim. <laughs> Sergeant, Inspector's waiting to see you. He's in his office now. All right, I'll go right in. Wait here, King. <laughs> well, Sergeant, sorry to rouse you out at this hour. Well, I knew it must be important, sir. It is very important. Sit down, Sergeant. Thanks. What's up, sir? Plenty. An Eskimo came in with a message from Constable Brooks at 30 Mile. He needs help as soon as he can get it. What's happened up there? A clever gang of crooks are at work in that vicinity. They seem to know when and where to hit to get plenty of gold. I see. According to the message from Brooks, they hit the bank when a large amount of gold ready for transfer was in its vault. Then when the express office had plenty of gold in the safe, they hit there. That is serious. That isn't all. They seem to know when a prospector leaves town with the take from his claim. They robbed one on the way to Dawson City. Hmm. Well, I'd say someone in a position to watch what goes on in town is in with that gang. That's the way it seems to me, Sergeant. But the constable hasn't been able to get a line on the gang at all. He sent a request for help. Fat, he asked for you to come there. Yes, sir. I want you to go, all right, Sergeant. If you don't, the constable may have trouble with the townsmen. They want to take the matter into their own hands. Oh, well, we can't let that sort of thing start in the Yukon. That's right, Sergeant. When will you start? I'll leave right away, sir, and take King with me. The sooner we get there, the better. Fine. Good luck, Sergeant. Thank you, Inspector. We'll do the best we can. Goodbye, sir. continue our adventure in just a moment. Right, three, you're up! Say, kids, wouldn't you like to be in the ballpark and see how a star pitcher makes the ball curve right over home plate? Golly, everything about a major or minor league game is exciting. Get in on that excitement. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and have mom or pop with you or another paying adult relative. It's as easy to get a free baseball ticket as going to the grocery store. Get it right inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Golly, why wait? When Mom buys breakfast cereal, be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Now, 
now to continue. All the rest of the night and through the next day, Sergeant Preston, with King running alongside, rode the trail to 30 miles. Meanwhile, after hearing about Preston's expected visit and making plans to ambush him and King, the two crooks, Jules and Fred, moved along the trail looking for a place in which to fire at the Mountie and his dog. Well, Jules, do you have any definite spot in mind where we'll wait for Preston and that husky of his? Yeah, there's some boulders just off the trail. Close enough for a couple of good shots. We'll soon be there. Yeah, sounds like a good place. From what I've heard about Preston's dog, we better make sure he doesn't catch our scent and give warning before we get a chance to shoot. Oh, the way the breeze is blowing now, it'll be coming from them to us. So the dog isn't going to catch our scent. Good. We'll have to make our first shots count, too, Jules. Otherwise, they may have a chance to take cover. Yeah, we'll have to make sure of our aim. We're both considered good shots, so that ought to be easy. How long do you think we'll have to wait for him to show up? Oh, not too long, I reckon. Not much of a ride here from Dawson City. Well, we brought enough grub to last a while anyway. Yeah. We'll camp right over there near the boulders till they come along. And we'll let them have it. Get up there. Get up. Within a short time, the two crooks reached the point along the trail Jules had mentioned. They drew rein behind the boulders and dismounted. Oh, oh. Here's the place, Fred. We'll be hidden by these big boulders just off the trail. Yeah, this is plenty close enough to the trail. Doesn't seem possible we could miss from here. That's right. Now we'll make ourselves comfortable. We'll have some time to wait. But it'll be worth it when we see that Mounty and his dog lying dead on the trail. It was the following evening when Jules stood up and looked cautiously over the top of the boulders. Hey, Fred. I thought I heard a dog bark. Yeah, I heard it too. Do you think it's Preston's dog? We'll soon know. We'll be able to see them come around the bend yonder. The wind is still from them to us, so the dog won't get our scent. Good thing it's still light. We'll have easy targets when they get opposite here. There they are. But the dog is running on the off side of the horse away from us. I'll aim for Preston. You try to get a chance at the dog. I have my rifle ready. It's going to be tough to wing the dog. He's shielded by the horse. Don't worry. After Preston's done for, we'll plug the mutt. They'll both be dead in a few minutes. On the trail, Sergeant Preston rode along leisurely to rest his dog and horse. Well, King, we'll soon reach 30 Mile. Just as Preston finished speaking, a shot rang out. <laughs> Jules and Fred looked cautiously from behind the boulders a short distance away. I hit Preston. He's lying on the trail, not moving. Yeah, you got him. That dog's still alive and running around like he's plenty excited. And we'll mount and ride over there to make sure Preston is done for. When we get near enough... We'll both put bullets into that dog. Let's get going. No, wait, Jules. Somebody's coming. That dog is acting like you see somebody coming to help. Let's get out of here quick. We'll cover our trail. Come on. Get up there. Come on. For a few minutes after the two gunmen hastily rode away, Sergeant Preston lay without moving. And then he slowly pushed himself to his elbows as one of the townsmen rode up and dismounted. Sergeant, you hurt bad? No, it's all right. Seems to be just a bullet crease across the back of my head. Stun me for a minute. The way you're looking over toward those boulders, King, the shot must have come from there. Well, try to pick up that trail. Oh. oh, still dizzy. Look, Sergeant, you better ride to town with me and have a doctor fix you up. And you'll be in better shape to trail whoever shot at you. Yes, that is the best thing to do. I'll try to reach the constable's cabin without being seen. Don't mention this around town. If they think they killed me, so much the better. I'll keep quiet about it. Must have been some of the gang who've been raising a ruckus in your town. Reckon they didn't want you to get to 30 miles. That's possible. Let's get going. Steady, Blackie. Come along, King. Get up, Blackie. Get up. Accompanied by the man from town, Sergeant Preston managed to reach the constable's cabin on the edge of 30 Mile without being seen. The townsman left and sent the doctor over. Then, after having food and rest, Preston sat down with the constable to discuss the situation. Now, constable, who was in a position to know I was coming here? Practically everyone, Sergeant. You see, they had a meeting, and I told them I'd send for you. I see. I'm sure whoever shot at me thinks I'm done for. They couldn't get to me to make sure because of the man who came along the trail. I must have been lying there stunned for several minutes. Do you think someone in town is behind that gang? Looks that way to me. And it's someone who's in a position to know everything that goes on here. Well, that could apply to a good many. <laughs> Things aren't kept very secret around town. Practically everyone discusses his business at the cafe. I see. Now, look. 
Suppose I stay here undercover for a while. You go to the cafe and keep your ears open. Someone just might drop a remark that would give us a line on the man who tried to shoot me. All right. I'll go over there right now. See you later, Sergeant. It was over an hour later when the constable returned to the cabin where Sergeant Preston was waiting with King. Well, Constable, anything happened at the cafe while you were there? Something was said that might mean a lead, Sergeant. Tell me about it. Well, I went into the cafe. A man named Jules, who does part-time barkeeping there, started a conversation with me. Well, Constable, when's the Marty coming here from Dawson? The one that has the big dog with him all the time. You mean Sergeant Preston? Yeah, that's the one I heard you were going to have come here. To tell the truth, I've been expecting him all afternoon. Maybe he's not even coming. He might be away from Dawson City, you know. I'd have been notified, or they'd at least send someone else in that case. Mm, that gang sees him on the trail, they're liable to wail him. You never can tell. Sergeant Preston can take care of himself. And as you said, he has that big dog. Hey, Jules, just let the constable do his own worrying. If that money's coming from Dawson, he'll get here sooner or later. Get busy with the customer. Yeah, sure, Mr. Carver. I was just interested, like everybody else, that's all. So this fellow Jules seemed interested in whether I'd get here or not, eh? That's right. And John Carver, the owner of the cafe and bank, didn't seem to like it either. Uh huh? Well, that's worth thinking about. As owner of the cafe and of the bank, Carver'd be in a position to... Constable, you think you could get the express agent to cooperate on a plan I have in mind? Yes, I'm sure he would. Good. I'll tell you all about my plan, and I want you to go talk to the express agent. And have him do and say exactly what I tell you. After listening to Sergeant Preston's plan, the constable went to the express office carrying two small sacks, such as prospectors use to transport gold. A short time later, the express clerk entered the cafe and approached Jules. How's that head wound of yours coming along? All right. It's almost healed up by now. Lucky that gang didn't gun you down for good. Yeah, that's right. I, uh, I'm looking for the constable. Have you seen him? Well, he was in here about an hour ago. I haven't seen him since. <laughs> Guess he rode off to do some snooping around after that gang he's after. That's up. You look worried. Oh, uh, nothing, nothing much. I'm, uh, I'm going home to get something to eat. If the constable comes in here, ask him to wait around till I come back on the way to the express office, will you? Sure. I'll ask him. Haven't got a line on the crooks, have you? Once it robbed you? No, no, no. Only I, I don't want to be robbed again. That's all. I'll be back in about an hour or so. Hmm. Guess I better talk with Carver. Come in, come in. What's up, Hughes? The express agent was just in looking for the constable. Where for? He wouldn't say. He's on the way to his cabin to eat. Be gone about an hour, he said. Well, what about it? Get to the point. I got an idea from the way he talked that he's got another shipment of gold down there in that old safe at the express office. Well, I wonder. I'll get Fred and Jim to come in. You wait here. This is a chance I didn't expect so soon. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. He did it! A home run! And the home team wins the game! Are you kids there? Are you seeing the exciting homers that your home team makes? Win or lose, there's nothing like the fun of a baseball game. The hot dogs, the popcorn, seeing star players in person. Come out to the ball game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat, Quaker Puff Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult relative and see a wonderful major or minor league baseball game free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. About 20 minutes later, Sergeant Preston with King and the constable waited in hiding behind the woodshed to the rear of the express office. 
Finally, they heard footsteps coming along the back way. Quiet, quiet, quiet. There they come. I think there were three of them. They're wearing bandanas across their faces like the crooks are said to wear. Yes, just watch and keep quiet. Fred, you come in with me. Right. Jim, you stay here and watch where anyone's coming. Let's go. Quiet, Jim. From their hiding place, the two Mounties and King watched as the men forced the back door and entered the express office. King looked expectantly at Sergeant Preston, but the Mountie gave no order or signal to attack. So the great dog waited, tense but quiet. After several minutes had elapsed, the crooks left the express office carrying the two sacks. My life was a good one, all right. Let's get away from here. Quick. Right. There they go. Let's follow them, Constable. I hope we get them with their leader. After them, King. <laughs> A few minutes later, Preston and the other Mounties stopped a short distance from the back door of the cafe. You came here to the cafe, all right. Came sniffing at the back door. Yes. Now what, Sergeant? You go around to the front and enter the cafe. Make your way unobserved to the office door in there and keep your gun handy. All right. What about you and King? We'll go to the back. When you hear a commotion, go in ready for trouble. Get going, Constable. Sergeant Preston cautiously approached the back door. And warning King to be quiet, he stood listening. Meantime, inside, Jules and the others were talking to John Carver. It was just like I said, Mr. Carver. Those two sacks of gold there on your desk were in the safe, ready to be shipped. Uh, are you sure nobody saw you coming in here? No, nobody saw us at all, boss. We made sure of that. We'll go out front again, and nobody can prove we ever left the cafe. That's right. It's the easiest job we ever did, Mr. Carver. <laughs> that express agent's going to be surprised when he goes to get that gold out. Yeah. Say, how about giving us our split right now, Mr. Carver? What's more, I think we should get more of a share than we've been getting. Jules is right, we should. We take all the chances and you grab most of the take. Now, wait a minute, you fools. You'll take what I give you and that's all. I'm the one who figures out the jobs and gets a load down on where you can get plenty of gold. Quiet down now. No use raising your voice. Then don't come in here whining about what you get. I'll give you the share from this job right now. What is this? What's the matter? Yeah, what's wrong? Look in this sack. Huh? Hey, what? Holy smoke, filled with stones and dirt. Here, let me see that other sack. Hey, this one is filled the same way. We've been fooled. No, no. I've been fooled. Where's the gold that you got at the express office? Where is it? Well, we don't know. Those are the sacks we found there in the safe. We brought them straight. Sure, they're not lie to me. You substituted these for the ones you stole from the safe. Constable wouldn't guard a couple of sacks of dirt and pebbles. Well, maybe not. I have a good mind to turn you all into the constable and tell him you murdered Preston. Why? Why now, the fellow who came along just after you shot the money must have brought in the body. <laughs> and this gun says you'll come across with the two sacks. You're trying to hold out on me. Take it easy now. You're the one who always told us what to do. You sent us out to ambush Sergeant Hush, Preston. Come on, the other chap. You'll not do hey. anything, Carver. Drop that gun. Sergeant Preston, get him. Fire. Oh. As Preston shot sounded, the constable with ready gun burst into the room. Hey, Carver and the other two crooks raised their guns to fire, but both Preston and the constable fired first. Oh. 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 King, too, had entered the fight, heading for the crook friend with a deep growl and grabbing him by his gun arm. Let go. Get him away. King. Down, boy. Watch him, King. Get their guns, constable. Right, you fools. Why didn't you shoot? Well, it all happened so sudden we didn't have a chance. We thought Preston was dead. Yes, I know. Good thing you were scared away by a traveler on the trail or I would have been dead. Looks like we have them all under control, Sergeant. That's right, Constable. This is the gang that caused all the trouble in this territory, and John Carver is the leader. Yes, your plan worked. Carver isn't as clever as he thought he was. Yes, but what plan? I don't understand. Sergeant Preston's wiser than you gave him credit for, Carver. After he was shot at out on the trail, he came into town secretly. He decided that instead of going back out there and trying to pick up the trail of whoever shot at him, he'd try a plan that would get the whole gang with proof in their hands. You, you mean the bags of dirt and pebbles? That's he... right. Preston guessed somebody in town must be the leader of the gang. He planted those bags of dirt and pebbles at the express office. And we sent the express agent in to talk to Jules. Uh, Jules was a fool to be taken in by... You're him. the fool to think you could get away with robberies and killings without being caught. That's right. They'll all hang. But Carver planned everything. He's the one who even planned shooting you on the trail. We know all about that now. Carver even had you rob his own bank, taking the money that belonged to the townspeople. No, they'll get it all back. Sergeant, I knew if you came here, you and King would find that gang. Glad we could help, Constable. Carver... I arrest you and your men in the name of the Crown for robbery and murder. If it hadn't been for somebody coming, we could have made sure you were dead back on the trail, along with your dog. Your plan backfired. I'm sure glad it did. Now that we've caught the entire gang, the folks here in 30 Mile will feel easier. Let's get them to jail, Constable. Once that's done, this case will be closed.
Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. There's Roaring Adventure on Mutual. Tales that will take your breath away and transport you into lands where danger is your constant companion. First, we take you far up into the barren Yukon territory of yesterday, where icy winds and howling wolves are enough to drive a man wild, and civilized ways are gone in an ever-present lust for gold. Now let's go to another lawless world, the west of early frontier days. Not so cold, but which makes up for the freezing temperatures with trigger-tense tempers, where the gun is a man's lease on life. This is a country which abounds with cattle rustlers, and where miles and miles go by before you see any signs of life. The West, beautiful but wild, a land which cries out for the hand of the law. You will never lack for adventure on Mutual, whether it freezes you with fear in the wild Northwest Territory or singes you with the acrid heat of the Western Plains. It's all on Mutual every week over most of these stations. Sergeant Preston stood before Inspector Conrad at Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson. Oh, Sergeant Preston, it's just the man I want to see. Something wrong, Inspector? Two men robbed the Dawson City Bank, got away with 20000 It happened yesterday. The officer who trailed them then lost the trail. I want you to get those crooks. I'll do my best, Inspector. They're desperate men. Be careful. Yes, sir. Again, I'll try to pick up the trail at once. Come along, Dick. <laughs> when Preston and Yukon King left to trail the bank robbers... They didn't know the clever trick the crooks would use in their attempt to escape. Can Preston and King catch the thieves after they've already outwitted two other Mounties? Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat, and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.